Alright guys, today we're going to solve using the square root method. Alright, so first step is what we want to do is when there is no x term, right, so let's go back to our standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. When there is no middle term, there is no x to the first power term, okay, we are able to solve using the square root method. Okay, and this is a shortcut method. So we have ax squared plus c, right, we don't have a bx term here. So if that's the case, what we want to do is we want to isolate for the x squared, right? We want to get the x squared by itself. So we want to isolate for the ax squared. Okay, so we would need to move the c value to the other side. When we have that isolated for, we're going to then take the square root of both sides to get x by itself. The opposite of squared is to square root. And then you'll get your answer. So my example, x squared minus 64. Okay, what we want to do, first step, is to isolate for this puppy right here. So we need to add 64 to both sides to get rid of my minus 64. Those go away. So we get x squared equals 64. Now, the next step is I'm going to take the square root. So the opposite of this squared is to take the square root. So these cancel out, and we're left with x equals the square root of 64. Now, let's review. The square root of 64 breaks down into 8 and 8. So we have a pair of 8's, those come outside, none left over. The square root of 64 is 8. Now the square root of 64 can also be negative 8 because negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64. So we can write the square root of negative 64, I can write my answer as plus or minus 8. Or we could say 8 and negative 8. Right, so what we just figured out is we just figured out that the two zeros, the two x-intercepts, are at x equals, sorry, are at 8, 0, and negative 8, 0. All right, so let's go down and let's look at some more examples. So number one, again, we want to solve, we want to isolate from my x squared, so let's add 81 to both sides x squared equals positive 81. Last step, step number two, is to take the square root. So we're going to opposite the squared. Those cancel out. We get x equals plus or minus 9. Okay, again, the square root of 81, we break that down into factors of 9 and 9. We have a pair that comes outside, and it can be plus or minus. Plus or minus. All right, looking at number two, isolate for your x squared. So we're going to add 200 to both sides. So we get 2x squared equals 200. Now we want to isolate for the x squared, so we're still not done. We need to divide by 2 on both sides. We get x squared equals 100. So now that we have the x squared isolated for, I'm able to take the square root to get rid of my squared. Those go away, and I get x equals plus or minus 10. And again, we could write that as that, or we could say x equals negative 10 and positive 10. You just found two different solutions, two different roots. All right, let's go on to, let's look at number 3. So let's divide by 4 on both sides. We get x squared equals 25 over 4. Next step is to take the square root. Those cancel out. We get x equals the square root of 25 over the square root of 4. Now the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 4 is 2. So x equals plus or minus 5 halves. Let's look at number 6. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So x squared equals 7 minus 6 is positive 1. I have the x squared isolated for, so now I can get rid of my squared. The opposite of that is the square root. Those cancel out. We get x equals the square root of 1, which the factors of 1 are 1 and 1. So we have a pair. It comes outside. The square root of 1 is 1. So x equals plus or minus 1. And again, that's two different solutions. That's a positive solution and a negative solution. Let's go to number 7. So number 7, I'm going to subtract 8 on both sides. And I get x squared equals negative 6. I'm going to square root both sides. Those cancel out. I get x equals. Now, the square root of negative 6. You cannot have a negative inside of your radical and get a solution that is a real solution. Okay, so if I see a negative inside of my radical here, my answer is no solution. Okay, what that gives you is that gives you an imaginary solution. So what this quadratic would look like is it would look like this, right? There is no solutions. It does not cross the x-intercept. does not cross the x-axis, excuse me. It does not have an x-intercept. Okay, it has an imaginary solution, which is why that negative is inside of my radical. 
We have no real solutions. No real solutions. All right, let's go on to number eight. I want to isolate for the x squared, so the way I get rid of a one half is to multiply by two on both sides. So those cancel out. We get x squared equals positive 36. I've got the x squared isolated for, so now I'm going to go ahead and square root both sides. The square root of 36 is plus or minus 6. Plus or minus 6. All right, looking at, let's look at number 12. Why not? So number 12, again, I want to get rid of this 1 half. So the opposite of multiplying by 1 half is multiplying by 2. Goes away. So this becomes x squared plus 75 equals 100. All right, now I want to subtract 75 on both sides. I get x squared equals 25. Now I've got the x squared isolated for, so now I can take the square root and get rid of it. So I've got x equals, the square root of 25, factors of 25 are 5 and 5, so we've got a pair of 5's, comes outside. Nothing left, so I get x equals plus or minus 5. Again, you just found two different roots or two different solutions.